having a lot of fun this week, man. Listen, Financial Literacy Month, I think it should be every day. You know what I mean? I don't know why we got to wait till April. Probably because April is the best month in the world. You know, what can I say? So we made it financial. Whoever decided to make Financial Literacy Month in the best month in the world, <clears throat> the 18th, um, did a great job. So look, man, we've been having a lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series that we've been on. If you've been learning a lot, come off mute and say, oh, yeah. Not everybody at the same time. <laughs> Wait, let me come off Bluetooth off. Okay, hold on. I got you in the wrong thing. If you've been learning a lot, now you can do it. Come off mute and say, oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So listen, man, let me give y'all a quick four-minute recap. So every day this week, including tonight and tomorrow, I'm doing what's called a wealth worksheet. A wealth worksheet is basically a sheet of paper that we fill out together. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. But we tackle different areas of your finances and why most Americans struggle. To me, it's just the it's just the worst thing in the world. It's the wealthiest country on the planet, but a lot of Amer Americans struggle. So Monday night, we tackle taxes. People don't realize it, but sales taxes, property taxes, Avalon taxes, state taxes, federal taxes, local taxes, county taxes, luxury taxes, inheritance taxes. They got us so messed up with these taxes that we don't even look at the taxes as part of the problem when the taxes is actually a main problem. So I talked about one move you can make. One move can put thousands back in your pocket per month. And you know what's sad? Over 100 of y'all will be on this Zoom. It's already, what, 90 plus? Over 100 of y'all will chime in. Thousands of you guys will see this on a replay. Y'all still not going to make that move. It's just, it's just what it is. I have to fight in the next 30 minutes, 30 years of indoctrination in your mind. I got to fight 30 years of the way you think. I got to fight 30 years of what some banker told you. I got to fight 30 years of what some financial advisor told you. I got to fight 40 or 50 years of, you know, 25 years of what your family told you. I'm just a beacon. I'm just going to give you some stuff for you to think about. You don't have to argue or debate with me, but I'm telling you now, taxes is a third of your problem because a third of your money is gone. And that one play can bring you money back into your household for nothing. Talk about it Monday. Go to extradigitmovement.com and click on replays if you want to see it Monday. Yesterday, hit them again. Not just me, the whole team hit them with the number two problem. It's your debt. Man, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a flip that debt around tonight. So I don't want to give you all too much on yesterday. But I will tell you this. If interest is the penalty you pay for the right to own things in advance, that you cannot afford, I want y'all to write that down. Interest is the penalty you pay for the right to own things in advance that you cannot afford. If that's what interest is, you got to start asking yourself, how bad do I need that? You just swiping away, swiping, swiping, swiping. Then they came up with these things called points and start making you feel better about swiping. I get membership points and I get, man, look, if that stuff at the end of the month ain't paid off in full, you just, get, you just gave the bank some free money. So here's the reality, right? I'm going to give you this nugget, and I'm going to show you how it ties into tonight's topic. You need to become the bank. See, we got people on the Zoom tonight that you guys are going to meet. I'm looking at some of, my, some of my own business partners. We actually became the bank. So we use their own tactics against them because it ain't like it's a secret. They just call it the bank a secret. But I will tell you this. There's something out there called arbitrage. That means the bank can loan your money like 10 times. And then you and your interest, because you had to have that Louis Vuitton purse today, those Gucci shoes fellas today, and you couldn't wait till you got paid. So you're willing to pay more than you had to, or you had to have that car, but instead of getting your credit up and just buying the car that you could afford, you're too worried about what society thinks. So you got to get that car because the neighbor got this car and your coworker got that car and you're hanging in a circle to get these cars, what you didn't calculate was all the interest because if you had just waited on your credit score to get to a certain point, which we can do all that stuff for you, you could have got a lower interest rate. Nothing wrong with a nice car. A nice car, with a, hor a nice car with horrible interest is the problem. So we can get you down in the twos and threes and fours instead of the eights and nines and tens. 
then you had to have it that bad. But here's what happens. We put stuff on credit cards. Boom. The bank gets free money. Boom. Because every time you make a payment, interest is in there. So that's free money that they didn't work for. Now you multiply that by millions and billions of people. The bank got billions of dollars off the backs of people and they're lending money. But guess whose money they're lending? Yours. Let me give you all an aha moment. The bank doesn't have any money. The bank has your money. Whew. That's just something for y'all to think about, Charles. The bank don't have no money. The bank didn't come into the door, come in the gates with a big old vault. The bank got your money. The bank got our money. So when they loan money, they're lending our money. And the reason they can lend our money is because they indoctrinated us into giving it to them for free. So you need a checking account? Yeah. Why don't you get a savings account to go with that? Yeah. You need bounce protection? Yeah. You want a CD with that? Yeah. What's the interest rate? Oh, it's 0 0.001. Go on and give it to me. You need um, some cashier checks? Yeah. You want a credit card with that? Yeah. You got a business? Yeah. I mean, you, you start thinking the bank, your friend, and then they hand you a sucker. That's rough. I'm going to tell you something. It's rough out here, man. It's rough out here. See, this is what you guys have to understand. This is what you guys got to understand. I ain't mad at the banks. I used to work at the bank. But the bank is just where you hold your money just to pay your expenses. It ain't, it ain't, they're not going to make you rich. They're not your best friend. The bank is selling products just like the store is selling products. You know how the grocery store sells groceries? You know how Macy's or Louis Vuitton or, or uh, um, Gucci sells clothes? The bank sells checking accounts savings accounts, CDs, bounce protection. The, you don't even know it because you didn't sign up for it, but the bank sells your overdraft fees. That's a product that you bought when you bounced a check or swiped the card too early. How do I know? Because I used to float a check like a Frisbee when I was in college, right? <laughs> I bounced so many checks that the bank bounced. So what I'm, what I'm telling you guys is that is a, a capitalistic thing for you to think or for them to have you thinking they're your friends, their product is a savings account. Like when you go to McDonald's, they say, um, you want to upsize that, right? You had a medium, but hey, for 70, 70 more cents, you can upsize. That's what the bank is doing. You want to, you want a savings account with that? How much is it? Oh, you, you just got to open it up with $25. Some banks now, they'll put the money in the account. You know why? Because it ain't their money. It's your money. They take other people's money and we'll start you off with $200. You're like, what? They're like, yeah, because they know if you need $200 to start it off, they're going to make $2,000 off you. It's cold out here, man. It's a cold world out here. I'm, I'm just giving you all the truth. So they're selling you a product. So don't let them give you a sucker when you leave. That's by design. And that sucker is called a dum dum, just so you know. I'm not calling nobody on here a sucker. I'm not calling nobody on here stupid. I'm not calling you a dumb dumb. I'm telling you what the bank is handing you at the counter. And you be happy, boy. Hey, give me, give me cherry. I ain't taking no more suckers from the bank. You know why? Because I flipped it on. Our organization flipped it on. And tonight's, tonight's topic, we're going to show you how to flip it on the banks. Everybody come off mute and say no more suckers so i know you with me no more suckers no more suckers no more suckers no more suckers see here's what happens you get them free interest boom on a credit card they take all of our interest free money because the principal went toward what you owe but the interest free money they drop it on somebody's car note so they lend somebody a $29,000 car. Boom. It's not their money. That's our money. That was the free money we gave them. They ain't work for it or nothing. Then guess what? They took the car. The car is worth $29,000 when you bought it. As soon as you drove off the lot, it's worth $22,000. And then next year, when they come out with a new car, it's worth $18,000. But you're still paying the note, the note on $29,000, even though the car is worth $18,000. 
and you got insurance on that car. So you're paying another $10,000 a year just in insurance. But that's another story. So you drove off the lot, $29,000. It dropped down to $22,000 because you put some miles on it. Then next year, it's worth $18,000 because they got a new one with the curve lights and the blinker on the um, on the um, mirrors. And that's, all, that's the only difference between the 23 and the 24 and the 24 and the 25. They just rounded the back off. So you got a new one. But that's okay. I'm not knocking new cars. I'm just telling you. All of us bought the car for the person. Then boom, because they made, you know, thirty nine thousand <laughs> off the car that was twenty nine thousand. They made an extra ten thousand. So now they put that on somebody's mortgage. Boom, all of us chipped in on somebody's mortgage. Then the house, by the time they pay it off, they made an extra hundred and ninety two thousand. So boom, they put that on student loans. That's called arbitrage. So you are sending kids to school. They just not your kids. These are just facts. This might be the coldest one tonight. Let's flip it. Put it in the chat. It's over 100 people on here. Put it in the comments. Let's flip it. If y'all ready to flip it and become the bank, put it in the comments. Let's flip it. All right. Let's flip this thing. Let's flip it. Here we go. Here's how this works. This is called the banker seat. Here's how they're getting away with it every single time. The banker's secret is called the rule of 72. Write that down. The rule of 72. That's all my smart people out there who need to know where 72 came from. I have no idea. It's a mathematical anomaly. It's just a formula that insurance companies and banks have used for centuries. It's called the rule of 72. The rule of 72 states, if you take 72 and you divide it by the interest rate, it tells you how long it takes to double your money. If you take 72 and you divide it by the interest rate, the number that pops out tells you how long it takes your money to double. Now, Brian, what exactly do you mean? Well, let me tell you what I mean. Remember fractions in college? Numerator, denominator. You put the numerator 72 on top. You put the denominator on the bottom. In this case, the denominator is the number one. You know why? Because you get 1% on that checking account that the bank gave you. Yeah, and it ain't, it ain't even 1%. But because I'm an English major and I'm not good at math, I can't do 0.002% in my head. So I'm going to say the bank is giving you 1%. Well, it takes your money 72 years to double because 1 goes into 72 72 times. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Well, Brian, I get 2%. Okay, 2 goes into 72 36 times. So you had $2 in 36 years. You had $1 in 72 years, right? I'm sorry. And you have a, in 144 years, your dollar become $2 because the interest rate has to go into 72. That's all you got to do. So anytime you want to know if you're getting a good deal on a lump sum, divide the interest rate into 72. So let's look at how this works. Tonight, guys, I love it. I'm going to give you three advantages. Y'all see these three advantages in the corner? I'm going to give you three people, and I'm going to give you three advantages. Felicia Fargo is to the left. Linda Liberty is in the middle. The banker is on the right. Now, to a lot of us on this Zoom, that banker is now us because we've become the banker. But in this example, this is what the bank is doing to most people who don't know that. I'm going to give you three advantages. Advantage number one, you're young. Okay? You are young. You're only 29 years old. Man, to be 29 again. Although April is the best month on the planet, <clears throat> the 18th to be exact. To be 29 years old, I will give anything. Right now, watch this. I'm also going to give you ten thousand dollars. Most twenty nine year olds don't have ten grand, but we're going to give it to them, and we're going to give you a high rate of return. What's a high rate of return? Above inflation, four percent and above, because your checking account, savings account, is only giving you like one percent. So we're going to give you three advantages, and I want you to see where you still end up. Watch, four percent, Felicia Fargo. Felicia's money, you got to take the four, divide it into 72, her money will double every 18 years. So she's 29 years old. 
told you I'm gonna give you youth. I'm gonna give you 10 grand. And now we gotta do is keep adding 18 years to it. So in 18 years, she'll be 47. Her 10 grand becomes 20. And then in 18 years, she'll be 65 and she'll have $40,000. Now I want you to type in the comments, yes or no, real quick. I gave you youth, she's 29. I gave her 10 grand and her money is doubling every 18 years. From her youth to her retirement, is 40 grand enough to make it? Yes or no? Let me just see. Okay, Sonya came out the gate. It's just Sonya said no. All right. Kim said no. Dad Gray said no. Tasha said no. Daryl said no. Anthony said no. Bernard said no. Lawanda said no. I, I guess the answer is no. She ain't going to make it, y'all. Let me tell you something. This is most Americans. This is most Americans. Somebody sold you on 4%. Somebody told you to save $10,000, but nobody ever does the math and say, where will I end up at that point? And then we wonder why we retire. We're like, what happened? You can't go backwards. You got to start making some changes now. All right, so watch this. We'll give you some more advantages in the middle. This next person is still 29 years old. Oh, Linda Liberty. Linda says, we get 6% here at Linda Liberty Bank. She gave, Linda's a customer at Linda Liberty and they're giving her 6%. So you're like, man, I'm moving all my money over here. Forget Felicia Fargo, I'm rolling with Linda Liberty. Okay, 6%. You got to take the six, divide it into 72. It goes 12 times. You say, you still 29, but now you 41 instead of 47. Y'all see the comparison? This person is six years younger with 20 grand. Not bad. We got to add another 12 years to the 41. She'll be 53. Her money will be 40 grand. And then 12 years later, she'll be 65 with 80 grand. Let me just ask you guys a question. With groceries going up, daycare going up, healthcare going up, clothes going up, college going up, interest rates going up, housing going up, rent going up. Is 80 grand enough? even though she getting 6%. Yes or no? Oh, Sonia, you come out the gates every time. No, no, Anthony said no, Kim said no, Ken said no, Robbie said no, Sam said no, Deborah said no, Gwen said no. So I guess it's a resounding no. 80 grand is not enough at 65 when the cost of living is going up like crazy. But old Linda Liberty said you getting for uh, 6%. All right, watch. Brian, where you headed? I'm going to show you all exactly where I'm headed. Let's look at what the bank is doing. Now, remember, the bank is taking all of our money. The bank don't have no money. Y'all think the bank like rich. No, the bank got your money. They got us believing that we should park and cash in everything with them. That's by design. So the banker gets 12%. The reason a banker gets 12% is because they're putting their money in real assets. Banks are investing in cattle. Banks are investing in oil. Banks are investing in precious metal, you understand? So banks are putting their money in real assets, whereas you putting your money in the bank. Now, let's be crystal clear. The person that introduced you to this Zoom tonight can show you how we get real assets, precious metal, land, not just any land, valuable land, Southern California land. How are we becoming millionaires? Because we got assets, we got experts who do all the work for us and explain the real asset um, assets that we possess and how you can get them for pennies on the dollar. Now, watch. 29 years old. Follow me on this one. Same 10 grand, but the banker divides six, I'm sorry, 12 into 72. And now it doubles every six years. Not every 18 like Felicia, not every 12 like Linda. Every six. Ooh, 10,000 becomes 20,000. You're only 35. 20,000 becomes 40,000. You're only 41. Let me show y'all something. Compare real quick. 41 with 40,000, the bank. 41 had 20,000. Uh, 65 over here had 40,000. Watch how fast this happens. You're 47, six years later, 80,000. You're 53, six years later, 160,000. You're 59, six years later. 320,000. 
you 65, $640,000 because you're getting 12% on your money. Why do you think the bank can give you 1%? Listen, sight unseen. What that means is when you get a bank, your um, driver's license and you just say, hey, and they say, hey, we don't know you. We don't even have a relationship with you. But we'll give you 1%. The reason they're doing that is because they're making tea. So you can't negotiate. The 1% is what the checking account offers. 0.02% is what the savings account offers. They're making 12. So you got 40,000. They made 600,000. But the whole 640,000 was yours. Over the course of those years, when you were 29 years old, they just kept 600. Boy, it's a cold world out here. It's a cold world out here because the 10 grand is what got it started. The bank just put it in a different place than they told you to put it. It's a cold world out here. It's a cold world out here. So look, let me just show you this before we go. And I'm going to introduce you to some people who became the bank. $600,000 difference between you, 40 grand, and them, 640 grand. Now, in summary, leaving your money in the bank is a $600,000 mistake. By loaning your money 10 times, the bank earns $600,000 more than you. You must become the bank. You must become the bank. Now watch this. I'm going to step away for two seconds. I'm going to grab my trial. I want y'all to hear this. I want y'all to actually see this. Okay? I want you to see this. So... People are going to challenge you, right? A lot of my friends, they love to challenge you. I've been retired since I was 22 years old. Made my first million, lost my first million, got it all back. My friends still want to argue. I'm to the point now, I don't even argue no more. I don't care if people listen. It ain't no hard feelings. If you want your credit score to stay a 418, oh, 418, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, if you want your credit score to stay at 311, by all means, keep it 311. If you want your taxes to be sky high and you pay 40%, hey, it's on you, right? If you want to get a refund, even though read means again and fund means money, keep your refund. It's on you. If you don't want your money up front so you can invest it, by all means, have at it. Far be it for me to tell you what to do with your money. I'm just going to show you how it works. I'm just going to show you how it works. Watch. Friends want to argue. I don't argue no more. You know what I do? I just pull up the internet. I say, okay, they don't have 12% out here, right? All right. You say, they don't have 12%. So if they don't have 12%, do me a favor and explain to me what this is. You say, Brian, what's this? Uh, let me show you. Oh, hold on. I'm going to go to a website. I'm going to share this on the screen so y'all can see me do it. So y'all, let's see, I'm not cheap. I'm going to go to Vanguard. Now, I'm not recommending Vanguard. I'm not telling you to invest in Vanguard. I'm just going to show you how funds work so you can see that I'm not crazy and that you, too, can get double-digit returns. Our experts will show you even better places. I'm just showing you that it exists. When you go to Vanguard, you got products and services. I'm just going to click on mutual funds because mutual funds are conservative. When you click on mutual funds, view all Vanguard mutual funds. So I'm just going to go here. I'm not recommending advice. I'm not a um, financial advisor. I don't have a license. Just showing you how money works. So these are all these different funds that Vanguard has, right? So you can go up here. You say, what's the performance on these funds? Oh, my goodness. Okay, this 500 index fund, Admiral Shares, Averages 8% past year 29, past five years 15, the past 12 years, I'm sorry, 10 years 12. Since inception, this bad boy has averaged 8%. I'm not a rocket scientist, but that beat Felicia Fargo and that beat None to Liberty. Oh, let's go on down here. Uh, let's see. The Bally Guilford Global Positive Impact Fund. 14% average in the first five years. Okay. 
as of uh, the first year, 6%. Right now, not doing so well. But that's just because the year just started. Y'all see what I'm saying? So when you understand these numbers and how they actually work, let's just go down here, pick any fund. Oh, here we go. The Capital Opportunity Fund. Since inception, this bad boy has averaged 11%. The past 10 years, it's averaged 13%. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the banker had 12%. In other words, there's some funds out there where you can become the bank. There's some wealth principals out there and some experts out there that we surround you with where you actually become the bank and you put your money where the bank is putting it. See, the bank is putting your money in places. So if you, if you feel safe enough to have a checking account, savings account, you obviously feel safe enough to have your money in the bank, why don't you own a piece of the bank? In other words, instead of just getting the 1% on your money, why don't you get 12% off the whole bank's money? Oh, Brian, we can't do that. I know. That's why can't got you in the whole, the word can't got you in a whole bunch of trouble. So I'm going to get out of here, man. I'll tell y'all, these will be about 30 minutes long. You need to get with the person that invited you and listen to these people I'm about to bring on because they have actually become the bank. Raise your hand if you have become the bank and you are playing now by the rules of the wealthy. You have a DCA, right? Diversified cash flow account. Or you have a PRA. Or you're involved in land banking. I want you to raise your hand. If you have a DCA, a PRA, or you're involved in our land banking program. Look at all these hands. Man, I ain't even going to be able to get there, everybody. Let's start with Miss Angela Johnson. Angela, talk to me. Land banking, private reserve account, DCA. How do you feel since you became the bank? Uh, hi, Brian. Can you hear me okay? I can. You look great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I feel great since I became the bank because for those of you all who don't know, this is Angela Johnson out of Fayetteville, Georgia. And yes, I was in the banking industry. And let me just tell you, Mr. Brian Bean, he is preaching right here. This is information that is not taught in schools. So I worked at the bank all this time and I had money and did not know what to do with my money. It was in the bank and it wasn't making me any money. And I worked at the bank 30 plus years. I can't believe it. But after getting with the experts and working with them and they were able to uh, reduce my taxes by five hundred and eighty seven dollars and I was able to pay off a lot of debt in 18 months, got me a total of twenty eight hundred thirteen dollars and fifty two cent back in my pocket per month. Let me just tell you, Brian, that gave me the buying power to invest and to prepare myself for my future. And so, yes, I became the bank and was able to retire from the bank by opening my private reserve account and putting my money somewhere where I didn't lose. And I also have had the opportunity to invest in land banking. So I have my money working for me at, I can't even tell you the percentage rate that it's working at, but uh, yes, my money is just doubling in, in, in record time. So I'm, I'm excited about this whole program and glad that I took the 72-hour money challenge. Good, good, good. We're going to keep these nice and sweet. Ken, bank, uh, land banking, um, DCA, PRA, how'd you become the bank? So my name is Ken Hayes from South Jersey. I'm in the uh, transportation industry and I got my PRA. And all I got to say is that those deposits hit different when you become your own bank because you know it's working for you and not somebody else. And I literally just had this conversation with someone saying, it was like, oh, the money, the banks take your money. I'm like, no, they don't. You voluntarily give it to them. Okay. Right. So when you become your own bank, it's a whole different story, a whole different conversation. And this is what it's all about. This is stuff that they don't teach you in schools. And this is stuff that you pass down from generation to generation. And that's the key. He just said it best. It's passed down. The person that introduced you tonight is going to show you how we do this. These are just free webinars I'm giving you just to open your eye up, that third eye. You wonder why you're struggling. You got to play by the rules of the wealthy. So we have companies and experts who do all of this for you guys. All you got to do is give it the person that introduced you. Sonia Howard, talk to me. Where you from? What you do? Land banking, DCA, PRA. And I heard you also make four figures a month residually. What's happening? 
Absolutely. Hello, everyone. I'm Sonia Howard from El Paso, Texas. I'm super excited because in my 52 years of living, no one has ever, ever told me about how to make money in my sleep, how I can, you know, purchase land banking and in less than a month of 40,000, y'all, investing 40,000 in less than a month, our land was worth over 310 thousand dollars so i'm super excited about that and then this dca y'all is nothing like it i mean coming from out of debt 21 years and eight months to less than five years come on now and then on top of all that i'm creating a four-figure residual income like i mean i'm just stoked right now my husband makes a three digit look a three figure um a residual income as well so i'm just super happy that you know we had the ability and um and the resources you know in order to purchase this land so i'm just super excited i can go on forever brian but listen those who are listening if you want in the pathway of growth you need to come on board you need to purchase this land and get you a dca <laughs> perfect man i appreciate it i appreciate it congrats on your four figure residual your husband is on his way to four figures a month you put that together that's eight figures a month no, i'm just kidding y'all <laughs> <laughs> Y'all both got. I figures. love your math, Brian. I love your math. Yes, eight figures. <laughs> yeah, eight figures. No, you put the four together. Four figures for you. Four figures for him. Hey, it'll feel like eight figures, and you're on right. your way to eight figures. You keep that investing. Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Ivory. Talk to him about real assets, man. See, stocks are cool. I got a nice stock portfolio, right, Mr. Ivory? Real estate, land, those are real assets. What happened with you in this company, man, that made you say, I need to look at money different. Where's your money now? Well, Brian, I got my money all over the place. I, I, I'm part uh, $40,000 into land banking that um, then grew over seven figures. Um, I have it in the DCA. I have it in the private reserve. And the thing is, Brian, because of the education of this program, while the world was losing money in the middle of the pandemic, our money was still growing. My land grew 37.5% in the first year in the middle of the pandemic when everybody was losing money. My private reserve grew 18% uh, percent in the middle of the pandemic. My DCA had allowed me to borrow from myself to become debt-free, and that money is steady compounding double-digit returns like I never took it out. So the education is real. And I echo what Sonia said. Hey, if you're on this Zoom and you're thinking about wealth, this is the place where you need to be. The education is priceless. Man, listen, Charles, we've hit hundreds of people all week. It's over 100 people watching tonight. Several thousand will see the replay. ExtraDigitMovement.com. Click on replays. If you miss uh, Tuesday night, if you miss Monday night, click on replays. But I'm going to tell you guys something, man. This man is telling you the truth. It's just knowledge and education that most of us miss. And it's just old indoctrination. And when you get out of that old, what we call, we used to call stinking, thinking, the world opens up to you. But Charles, that's the hard part, right? It's getting a person to see that they're really in their own way with their own thoughts. But, they, but they're not happy with their situation, but they don't want to do nothing about it. All I can do is show you, right? They're in the dark. It's, it's, that light is bright. They hiding from it. That's all good. I appreciate it, man. Hey, guys, listen. Tomorrow... I'm doing the final one of the week, and it is a serious one. I'm going to show you guys the power of infinite returns. Y'all know infinite. The root word is infinity. I'm going to show you the power of having infinite returns coming to you over and over and over and over again. The best investment you can make is in yourself. The power of infinite returns is a wealth concept you can't escape. Same time, same Zoom. 9 30 we're gonna knock it out and who knows man it's financial literacy month i don't know i may do an extension or something at by the end of the month but i want you to know we're closing it out tomorrow bring everybody you know at 9 30 right here same zoom for the power of infinite returns it's been a it's been a blessing man i'm gonna end tomorrow with a bang you guys have a good night